Glory to God. I want to welcome you to another podcast of the Prodigal Son. You know, I do these prayers every time I do a podcast and and I want to I want you to know and understand that this is my earnest desire, my earnest prayer for you that you would come to understand just how much God loves you. Uh, Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now He is far above of any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. I thank God for just a glimpse of just how much he loves me. And I pray that that you open your eyes to his love today. Glory to God. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you for your word. Touch my mind. Fill my mouth with your word. Help me to put forth what you would have me to say today, that people can see and understand that ju- that you will provide. You will take care of the things that they will give you to take care of. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for all you're doing, all you have done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. You know, we've been in Matthew 6, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and I'm going to read Matthew 6, 28 through 30 today. And I want you to realize and understand that God's provision is there for you. Listen and understand this. I want to read this scripture, and then I want to tell you what, what I what I seen today. Uh, of Matthew, the 6th chapter. And the 28th verse, it says, And why take ye thought for for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore God, so if, if God so clothe the fi- grass of the field, which is today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Now that's Jesus talking. He's talking about God providing, providing the things that you need. Now he was talking to these people and, and he was explaining to them that if, if God's going to clothe the flowers of the field... He, he, he said, God has arrayed the flowers of the field far more glorious than he arrayed Solomon. He will take care of you, O ye of little faith. That's what he was talking about. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what happened to me today. Now, I'm, I'm uh, recording this on Sunday after church. 
And after church, I came and, and, and I had to stop and get some things at the grocery store. And, and I got what I needed at the grocery store and I went to the, to the register. And I saw something that literally just, it made me mad, just to be honest, made me mad. I walked up to the, the gross, up to the register and there was a gallon of hand sanitizer, a gallon, just in a white, plain white jug and a box of, of a, a latex gloves. I looked, and the the hand sanitizer was $42 for a gallon of hand sanitizers. And the latex gloves were $8.799. I happened to know a manager of one of those, this chain of stores that's in the thing, and I was upset. I'm thinking this, this, this is a locally owned grocery store, and they've got a few of them around here in this area. So I called him. I said, let me, let me, I want to clarify what I just saw. He said, what's that? I mean, he's a good friend of mine. Him and his, his brother and I are very, very close friends. And we talk, you know, we talk. And, and I, told, I asked him, I said, did I just see a gallon of hand sanitizer for $42 at your store, at one of your stores? And he said, Stacy, he said, we pay Thirty-nine dollars for this for that gallon of hand sanitizer. So they were making less than ten percent on it. I said I saw a, a box of of uh, uh, latex gloves there beside it for seven ninety-nine. He said we pay seven ninety-five for those. So they basically not making any money on them at all, making less for ten than ten percent on the hand sanitizer. And he went on to tell me not only are they paying this much money for that, he said, but you wouldn't believe we're paying almost six dollars a pound for ground beef, and they say it will be far past that next week. And he and I were talking. I said, well, I was about to boycott your stores. I said, because, you know, I I just could not believe that stuff has gone up the way it is. And then I got to thinking. I got to thinking about this, this scripture. And, And there's people out here struggling just to buy hamburger meat to feed their family. To, to, to buy a gallon of hand sanitizer to keep them, keep them safe. And 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 I, there's nothing I, like, like I say. I use hand sanitizer. I want you know you you got to be uh, have common sense in everything you do. But then the Lord brought this scripture to me, and and even though things the cost of things and and it and and to no to no fault of the store that I came out of, but the the suppliers and the middlemen and 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 the manufacturers and the people that process things to get it to the stores he said he told me that that ground that that cattle are paying a, like a dollar and 35 cents a pound on the hoof in other words that's what you'll get for uh, that's what you'll you'll uh you have to pay for a cow that's standing on the hoof and he said it's been that way for for a long time. You know, it pays about the same. You have to pay for it about the same. He said, but the but the uh, in between the the cow standing in the feed lot and it on our shelves has went up uh, unreal, unreal. And I'm glad that I called him because it made me understand that it's not the the stores necessarily that are doing it but the 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 companies that are they're just paying the same what they paid for for this and and absorbently raising it and i'm sure there's they've got more costs and in sanitizing things and i understand things go up but what i want you to realize and understand today is that no matter how much things cost no matter how much Things get out of hand in the world that we live in. God will always provide. God's provision, I want you to understand, God's provision will always be there for you. You have to believe that. You have to understand that. And not be swayed by what you see, by what you hear, 
And for goodness sake, don't let the world, don't let the world get in your head and convince you that that what you see and what you hear out of the people around you, out of your circumstances and the things that are going on in 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 in, in and around your life are bigger than the God that you serve. He'll always provide. I don't care what it is, he will always provide. And and that's what I got. I, I'm so glad that I called him and talked to him. Because I come to understand that it wasn't the store, and he's just a store manager. He don't own it, don't have stock in it, nothing. He's just, he's in, you know, he just works there. I've known him for years, known his brother for a long, long time. And, and the Lord brought this scripture, what I've been talking about this week, you know, through this scripture that God's going to come through, and he will. I don't care if hamburger meats gets the thirty dollars a pound. He's gonna make a way to take care of us. I promise you that. I promise you that God will take care of what He is His of His people. Get to get, come to understand that. No, my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And don't ever let anybody change your mind. You know, this morning my pastor brought up, and I wanna I wanna read you a scripture that he gave us, and it's Psalms one. And I don't know, I think he did read uh, the first three three verses. He says, "Blessed is the man that walketh count, not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper." Now, here a while back, I preached on that very scripture. I taught on that, but the first verse jumped out at me. It says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Do you understand that? That, by, that verse means when uh, blessed is the man that does not allow ungodly influence that is in your life to sway you. Do you understand that? Blessed are the people. Blessed are the ones that do not allow the world to sway them or ungodly influenced people. They may be good Christian people doing the best they know how to do, but if they're paying attention to more about what's going on in their life, what they can see and what that what they are hearing and being influenced by, if they're allowing that to influence their decisions, guess what? They're not being blessed. They're being swayed. They're being pushed in a direction that is not godly. And and this world that we live in today is in a place that if we, the, the, the nation that we live in, and I believe it with all my heart that President Trump is guided by what, what the Lord is wanting us to do because he has shined in, in, in overcoming what Satan has meant to, to tear this world apart, to tear this nation apart. And he has made some very good decisions. And, and I don't know if he's ever given God the glory for it, but I promise you that was a godly influence, whether he realizes it or not. And, and, and if you will come to understand that blessed is the man that walks not in the council of the ungodly. In other words, don't let people or situations or anything else around you sway you from knowing and doing what you know God's Word says for you to do. Don't let it sway you into thinking, thinking that there's no other way other than just to throw up your hands and quit. People, I have come and I have been in situations in my life in, in, in recently that I, that I come just a hair of allowing the influences around me to push me to do something stupid and throw up my hands and quit. I won't do it. I, I, the Lord brought it to my mind and my attention, son. You need to dwell upon my word and quit letting 
ungodly and ungodly influenced people push you in a direction that you know to be wrong. Do you see that? And and I'm just going to be honest with you. Hey, I'm just as I'm just as apt to listen to the people around me and the situations in my life as you are. But there's one thing different that I have come to the conclusion. I sat down before a, a, a pastor that wants dead, le- dead level best, w- will do his dead level best to feed me what I need to be strong. And it ain't a bunch of, it ain't a bunch of uh, uh, tradition. It ain't a bunch of nothing. This, the message that he preached uh, this morning will come out next Sunday, May the 31st. This, this message that I'm preaching right now will come out on June, June the 3rd. So so they coincide. Remember that. If you're listening to this podcast, remember what I'm telling you, that you can count on God's Word. I want I want to do something today that I don't do very much and I want to I want to to encourage you encourage you to 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 go back through these almost 500 podcasts on this on this podcast and and listen to them count on them stand on them my pastor's website is in the notes on his messages and there is a multitude of audio of things that you can listen to to draw strength from. And I promise you, he wouldn't be on my podcast if I didn't think he was doing what he's, or if I didn't know he was doing what he's supposed to do with the Word of God. Understand that. I want you, I want to influence you to look to God's Word, not to men. I want to influence you to understand that God's Word is true above all opinion. And if you'll stand on God's Word, He'll pull you through. I don't care what goes on in your life. And, you know, I today, I didn't realize things. My wife shops. I don't go to the grocery store unless I'm just running in and getting something for her. Or if I need something, I think about it, I'll run in. I don't do that. She knows what things are cost, and she knows what things are, you know, expensive and this and that. I don't. I don't understand that. But when I seen what I saw today and call that man and, and talk to him, I come to understand that the world that we live in is struggling, struggling. And I want you to understand and to know that God's provision is there for you. Look to him. You may say, well, I don't, I've, I've never been born again. I don't know what it's like to depend upon God. That's the easy part. That's the easy part. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Know and understand something today. You can be saved. All you've got to do is confess Him as Lord of your life. Believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, and you shall be saved. Come to know that. Come to understand that. Come to know and understand that God is for you. He's not against you. And He will save you if you will believe Him and confess Him as Lord. Stand on that promise. Stand on God's Word. And if you've never been born again, be born again today. And then get in God's Word and believe it above all opinion. Believe what God says above anything that's going on around you. Ungodly influence will mess you up. Ungodly influence will put you out in a place that you should never be. Always depend upon God's Word and stand on it. Stand on it today. Glory to God. Get in God's Word. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life and watch Him change your life forever. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God is doing in your life.
stand on God's Word. We want to help. We want to agree with you according to God's Word on your prayer request and things that are going on through in your life. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. And I want to thank all the partners. Partners, thank you for all that you do faithfully to support this ministry so that we can put God's Word out all over the world. All over the world, free of charge, for people to grow in, to be strengthened by, and most importantly, to be born again through the truth in God's Word. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do today to sow into His kingdom. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.